Welcome to Retro Basin. Today we're gonna go through the top 10 as seen on TV lures that you've never seen on TV. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know we post a new video like this one. Let's get started with the top 10 as seen on TV lures that you've never seen on TV. So coming in at number 10 <laughs> is a lure that I never heard of until I happened to pick up a few, I think it might have been on eBay. And it is called the Flashback. It breathes scent, it flashes, and <laughs> it might possibly be the worst designed bait I've ever seen. So here is the old flashback, and <laughs> there's just a lot going on with this bait. So I guess we'll start at the, at the front of the bait here. It's got, so I guess that's 36 pound test line. That's not even braid, that's like old catfish line or something. It's got a little uh, split ring here, it's got a crimp, it's got a bead and a little, eh, sort of a micro buzzbait blade, and that's like a tri-wing blade right there. That's what's on the front. And you notice this thing kind of moves. So I imagine probably the first cast you make with this bait, <laughs> it's gonna wrap right around the hook. Now the reason that this moves, and inside you'll see there's a spring, and you've got a little piece of fabric there. So I guess the theory is that you load some scent into those gills, either on the front or maybe there. And as you work the bait, that little ribbon maybe makes the scent disperse. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever used fish scent before. I kind of hate to use them on any lure that's non-disposable, basically anything other than a soft plastic, because it just kind of junks up the bait and I don't know how effective it is. But if you did choose to do it, can you only imagine getting a bunch of, I don't know, <laughs> gizzard shad oil inside of this thing? Oh, that would probably mold up in about two minutes. The next bait on this list might just be one of the most inappropriately named baits <laughs> that I've ever seen. This one from Bucket Buster Lures, The Cripple. So what this bait is, and I've never seen this on TV, I picked this up I think at a flea market, it sort of looks like a bee squad hollow bellied frog. And notice he's got, yeah that's right, just one leg because this frog is a cripple. So we've got a little bit of verbiage on the back, we'll take a look at it to see why this lure was the wave of the future. It says, congratulations, you now own one of the world's finest topwater lures, the Cripple. For best results, remove the Cripple from the package and tie directly to your fishing line. I noticed that a lot, by the way, on these descriptions. They always say tie directly to your line, I guess because most folks who buy this bait would just use a snap, maybe, I don't know. Cast the lure into thick matted weeds just beyond pockets of open water. Weedless design allows you to work the cripple slowly through thick weeds and into open water. Stop the lure for a couple of seconds and then give quick small jerks, mimicking an injured frog. Remember that fish species feed on crippled prey. And if you work this lure, like our name says, you'll have plenty of fishing action and enjoyment. So would this lure actually work? You know, it might. Uh, and no, it's not because it's got one leg. I think most bass under a mat of vegetation probably think it's a bluegill or something flopping up there anyway. 
So yeah, something probably would come through and hit this. But if you look at that hook, I don't know. I think your chances of actually catching a bass if it hits this are pretty low. It wouldn't be a retro bass in top 10 list if it didn't have at least one beer lure in. If you recall, the top 10 as seen on gimmick TV fishing lures of all time had two of them. Well, this time we have just one. So this is a bait from Weber Spoons, a spoon company that I've started to see around a little bit as I'm searching for more old school tackle in various tackle shops. But this is called the Beer Spoon. And yeah, buddy, that is a Schlitz long neck. <laughs> so it looks like this spoon comes in two different flavors. It's got Budweiser and Schlitz. Of course, you know, I'm gonna prefer the Schlitz model. And you know what? Spoons work. I think this thing would actually catch a bass. A couple things I probably would do. Number one, uh, that hook is always gonna concern me. Just like a, you know, 1980s old school hook. I don't have the patience to sharpen them or the skill, so I probably would swap that out. And second, if you look at the eye of that bait, that makes me a little bit nervous. And whenever you're tying directly to, what is that, punched or drilled metal, I worry that that line is gonna nick. So I probably would add a split ring to that before I cast it. So all in all, I don't know if this is the spoon that made Milwaukee famous, but I bet it would catch a bass. The next lure on this list <laughs> is another in a long line of inappropriately named fishing lures. Not only is this the most revolutionary lure in the world, it's also got probably the greatest name ever. So what is the hooker aside from the world's smallest tackle box? And that's a little bit confusing, right? This is an interesting lure that I picked up some time ago. I don't know that this ever made the rounds on the As Seen on TV, but it's got a few dead giveaways that it is a gimmick lure. First off is the outrageous claim that it is the most revolutionary lure in the world. Anytime a lure company tells you that basically every other lure in your tackle box is obsolete, those little red flags should start going off. Second dead giveaway is the verbiage. What gimmick lures tend to lack in fish catching ability, they definitely try to make up for in verbiage. Check this thing out. It's got some directions here on the front, directions on the bottom, and even more directions on the back. I gotta tell you, I think that you would probably spend about half a fishing day just reading the directions on how to fish the hooker properly. And by the way, there's more directions inside. Here is the bait itself. It is clear, so it might be a little bit hard to appreciate on camera, but it has a shape and profile quite similar to a bass arena, especially when you look at that little bill. So honestly, even though this is a gimmick lure, I do think this is pretty well constructed. Yeah, the hooks aren't great, but I fished with worse. Albeit not too popular today, this is definitely a time-tested bass catching design. So this says this is the world's smallest tackle box and I'll show you how to basically rig this thing. You push the head in and turn and the lure pops apart into two. Now the design of this bait is you can do a lot of things here. You could like that image, just put in some rattles and turn this into a rattling bait. You could put some colored yarn or something like that in there to add a little bit of color to this. Or you could add varying amounts of water so that this bait will go from what is you know, probably a pretty high floater to a suspending or even a sinking bait. So I do like the design of this. Uh, I don't know if this would obsolete every other lure in my tackle box, but I could totally see myself fishing this and catching a bass on it. By the way, is that not like the weirdest fish you've ever seen? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> the next lure in the list definitely carries on the tradition of gimmick lures of having a ton of words on the package. This thing is called the Crazy Legs. This is, it's new, it's revolutionary. A word that we're hearing a lot today, by the way. A bass killer with true lifelike action, the Crazy Legs by the old Muller Perry Company. And this is a top water 3 8 ounce class. So what does it say on the back here? There's a <laughs> more verbiage here, some directions enclosed. The Crazy Legs is an entirely new concept in a mechanized activated bait. We're just gonna have to open this thing to see what they're talking about. Okay, so before I show you the action, and I have opened this thing before, so I kind of do know how it works, I want to break down the bait and just show you the different components, because it's definitely a unique design. First things first, it almost has a sort of a river runt shaped nose, doesn't it? Isn't that interesting? It is, I think this is probably a foam type material. Let's look at the hook hangers. So these hook hangers go all the way around the length of the body and then the hooks are attached to that. It's a very unique way. I don't know what the point of that is. It has something probably to do with that quick change technology. But nevertheless, that's the way they decided to do that. The eye itself makes me more than a little bit nervous. I've never actually fished a lure with a clear plastic eye. Uh, I'm a little worried any monofilament would probably cut right through that, and if not, a bass might snap it, so don't love that. And now let's look at this propeller on the back. This is interesting. It is a little tri-wing propeller there, and it's on the rear of the bait. Now this actually has a purpose beyond being just a normal sort of bubble-making buzz bait blade, and I'll show you. So as you reel this thing through the water, I imagine this little blade is going to start turning and check out the legs. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest thing ever? Now with all the commotion going on on the surface, with the bait itself uh, going through the water, this little propeller, I'm not sure how much a bass is going to notice these little pipe cleaners dangling up there. But hey, pretty cool idea, all said and done. I actually would fish this bait, and I probably would get a hit on it. I'm a little bit nervous that it would get lost or destroyed on my first day on the water, but I could be talked into it. The next lure on the list comes from Action, and it is the amazing fishing lure. <laughs> what a name. So it swims and dives on its own power, and I will show you how it does that. Before we even look at the lure, though, I do want to pause to give Action credit. This is probably one of the most ambitious packages for a lure that I don't know would work. The kit comes with two different lures, and all of these, which are the actual fuel pellets, and I'll show you how they work, but notice there are two different kinds of fuel pellets. The lures themselves look probably about as lifelike as anything you could ever hope to buy on TV. It says now you can catch more fish and bigger fish with the amazing fishing lure. The self-propelled lure swims, dives, and flops, just like a crippled minnow. A crippled white and red minnow, I guess. It drives panfish, game fish, saltwater fish into a frenzy as they strike at the colorful lure. The amazing fish lure swims and dives by itself without being pulled. It swims to various depths down to 15 feet for up to an hour or more with slow erratic motion, what no fish can resist. First off, if I cast this lure out there and it's flopping around for an hour and I haven't had a hit, <laughs> I'm sorry. Now you can haul in your trophy size largemouth bass, pike, pickerel, perch, crappie, trout, 
or any other type of pan or game fish. Your friends will insist on learning your fishing secret. <sighs> Some secrets are probably left uh, best untold. Here's how the amazing fishing lure works. All you'll do is snap open the fuel chamber, drop in two pellets of fuel, and snap shut, all in less than 60 seconds. So 60 seconds to load it and an hour to let it, you know, swim. The fish lure is then cast into the water, get set for the thrill of your life. Well, I don't know about you bass and buds, but I am ready for the thrill of my life. So let's check out this amazing lure. <laughs> I just, the audacity, I love it. So here's the kit, by the way. So this looked pretty uh, well organized here. Not quite as amazing of a presentation, to be honest. So we've got two fishing lures here, and then we've got your handy dandy fuel pellets. So let's pop open one of the lures to see what she looks like. So there we go. Uh, in a word, amazing. It is eh, a little, what is that, a one inch, one and a half inch bait. What's interesting is there's only one place to tie a line, and it happens to be right where the hook is. So I don't know what that's going to do, just swimming around with the hook and the line going to the same uh, entry point. That might be an issue. But let's go ahead and try to open this thing. Okay, so the lure opens up here. And notice you've got a few holes here. This is the port right here where you put in your fuel pellets. So I think you pop in a couple of fuel pellets. Uh, you shudder. You give her a cast. And Bass and Buds, get ready for the thrill of your life. One of my favorite gimmick lures of all time has to be the flying lure. And one of my favorite lure designers of all time has to be Tom Mann. So you can imagine my absolute excitement when I saw a lure that combined both of those things. This is called the flying rattler. Catches more and bigger fish and, yep, designed by Mr. Tom Mann. I imagine this came out sometime in the fish world era. The reason I say that is the finish on that is very reminiscent of some of the fish world crankbaits, pogo shads that Tom came out with later in his lure building career. This bait I actually think would work and I've got a few Texas lakes where I think this thing could do some real damage around boat docks and I'll show you why. This unique lure can be fished in many ways for many species of freshwater and saltwater fish. It includes a loud fish calling rattle to entice the big ones. It walks on top as long as you retrieve and glides backward on a slack line. You could swim it under boathouses, rock cliffs, and lily pads. Going where no other lure can go, just like the flying lure. Excellent for topwater zigzag walking like a spoon. Works great for schooling stripers and other species. Sinks slowly. It is excellent for bottom jigging. And it is offered in the new 3D photo series. We take a photo of a live fish, release it, and fish with its photo. How real can you get? I've got one of these baits out of the package. I did take off the rear hook, but you get a pretty good idea of what this thing looks like. So it's actually a pretty big spoon. It looks like a little four inch spoon Really nice photorealistic uh, pattern on it. And there we go. That is the side profile. Very similar to a flying lure. You can see that it's a little bit thicker here and it's actually a little bit weighted on this side. So when you cast this bait, let it sink. I imagine it sort of does that maneuver where it'll glide away from you into cover. I think this thing would actually be really good around some of the boat docks on Lake Austin, Lake Travis that I've been fishing as of late. A couple things I'm excited about with this lure, a couple things that have me a little bit worried. On the plus side, this is a heavier bait. One of my main critiques of the flying lure is that it is more of a finesse bait. 
It's small, it's light, it needs light line to really swim properly. Trouble is, in the places that you really want to be throwing a flying lure, you kind of want some heavy duty tackle. This thing is going to be a breeze to cast and I can definitely throw this probably on braid without too much of a concern. Now the hook itself is going to go right here. I'm going to swap this guy out and put a nice high end treble hook here. But as this lure glides into cover, yeah, the, having that treble hook on the leading end makes me just a little bit nervous. So I'm probably going to be, you know, losing one or two of these, uh, especially around some of the zebra mussels that we encounter. That being said, I am pretty excited to get out on the water with this version of the flying lure. Smoke them if you got them. I don't know what came first with the next lure on this list. I don't know if Rebel designed the humpback or if the humpback was designed specifically for Joe Camel. But here we have it, <laughs> that is right, the humpback from Rebel. What is so cool about this gimmick lure to me is the fact that it is a real lure. It is from a real manufacturer, so uh, this is a little bit more designed, I think, to be novelty, but you know it's gonna work because it's built well and it looks like a pretty tried and true design. So this is the crankbait version. It's meant to be in the shape of, of Joe Camel, <laughs> which is pretty cool. And we'll see what it says on the back here, this bad boy. If you know fishing like Joe knows fishing, and Joe knows fishing, you look for the best fishing tackle at the best price. And that's exactly what Joe's Tackle Shop delivers. Quality products just like the Joe Camel Humpback Lure by Rebel. Every item has been tested and proven under rigorous conditions and is personally guaranteed by none other than Joe Camel himself. At Joe's Tackle Shop, our aim is to help you get the most enjoyment out of fishing. And when it comes right down to it, we have a pretty darn good aim. <laughs> Here is a humpback lure that is out of the package. And this is pretty cool. It's an interesting shape. So I do think that from a profile, from an action, this thing would definitely catch a bass. This is not necessarily my first choice when it comes to color, but that being said, clearly a pattern that the bass have not seen too much. So this one is pretty cool. It's got, you can see the uh, camel profile there. It's got the nice rebel lip. I might swap out the hooks and give that one a toss. Now this lure also came in a topwater version of the humpback and this is intriguing. I've never actually seen a rebel topwater humpback so I don't know how this thing would fish but I am intrigued to get out there and throw it. It looks sort of like a little head and tiny torpedo and just a single rear Mickey Mouse style blade on it. <laughs> I know these two lures are meant to be novelties first, but I don't know. I think they could smoke a bass or two. The next lure on this list and the number two gimmick lure that you've never seen on TV also comes from a reputable tackle producer, that is Cotton Cordell, who came out with this bait called the Prez. This has to be probably one of the coolest crankbaits that I've ever seen. It was designed as, I don't know if it's a tribute or a joke, but the inspiration for it was President Jimmy Carter, who was a peanut farmer down in Georgia. And this lure, yeah, right. Um, and by the way, sometimes it goes by the name of the goober. It is in the shape and color of a peanut. It does have a couple of eyes on them, those little blue things. And <laughs> look at the set of chompers on that bill. <laughs> I guess that was to mimic the former president's uh, smile, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but really a pretty cool, unique design. I have cast this thing. This actually fishes pretty well, to be honest with you. And it's just a ton of fun to catch a fish on a crazy bait like this. 
Overall, it's pretty solid. It feels like it's probably a third of an ounce to me. It's not quite half an ounce. It's a floating crankbait, probably dives till about three to four feet, all said and done. There is a little bit of verbiage that comes in here, and let's see what it says about the Prez. It is approximately one third of an ounce. Okay, I was right there. After you've had your little joke and laugh or two, try the Super Goober in the water. Believe it or not, the Prez was designed to catch fish. I actually do believe that. Fish the Prez as you would any other crankbait. The natural color is appealing to most game fish under most conditions. If you like catching fish, you can vote for the Prez and win a majority of the time. Cotton Cordell Tackle in Hot Springs, Arkansas. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Prez did not take off like some other gimmick lures like the Head and Big Bud. So it doesn't come in a ton of different colors. I kind of wish this thing had taken off in Japan and you could only imagine the insane variations that you would have gotten. It does come in a couple of different colors and this is one of them that I've got. This is the old Golden Goober. So let's pop this thing open. <laughs> so this is the uh, same profile in pretty sweet metallic gold. And check this out. <laughs> A little golden grill on this bad boy. I don't know what kind of tackle I would throw this thing on. Probably my Daiwa combo with some 10 pound test mono. But all around, I think I might just have to give the old goober a go. And now, Bass and Buds, it is time for the number one as seen on TV fish and lore that you've never seen on TV. In the mid-1980s, you could not open up a Bass Pro Shops catalog without seeing an entire page dedicated to novelty, gimmick, and obscene lures. The Shag Quack was a staple on those pages. What was kind of crazy about this lure and the reason that I put it as number one on this list was the fact that it's amazing this thing ever got into production. Even more amazing that it was a staple in the Bass Pro catalog for so long. Here is one of the Shag Quacks that is out of the package and yeah, it looks like a mallard. Now, this is a pretty heavy bait. It doesn't rattle, but it is, I feel like that is solid foam. It's a really, I won't say it's a fish catching bait, but it's a really well-designed bait. Some time and definitely some money went into this thing. And it is even patent pending. Now, I have never actually cast the Shag Quack Depending on the comments from this video, this might be the first one I get out on the water. But I don't know what this thing is going to do. In theory, you would look at this and go, that's probably a topwater bait, right? It's a duck, it's profile, everything else screams topwater. But you get this thing in your hand and I don't know. I imagine I might cast this thing and she might start sinking. So I have no idea how this thing is going to fish. So let's go ahead and read the old Shad Quack story. The Shad Quack was developed by fish enthusiast Virgil Waterwacker. I don't think that was his real name. In the waters of the upper Mississippi River. Well, his idea sprouted when he sat feeding the ducks at a river when the water parted and a carnivorous largemouth inhaled a full-grown mallard duck right in front of him. Old Virgil figured he was on to the hot new fishing idea, and after months of development, the shag quack was born, er, hatched. <laughs> Informative and helpful fishing instructive. Okay, so let's see if there is any real instruction on how to fish this, or it's just more, you know, <laughs> jokes. Strap yourself into your seat for fear that the big one will pull you in. Okay, yeah, this is not going to help me. Toss your shag quack into the general direction of the water. Prepare yourself for the fight of your lifetime with a monster whopper, as opposed to a small whopper. 
In the case of slow-bodied whoppers, reel your shag quack in erratically like a wounded duck. For real action with dogfish, soak your shag quack with duck scent. Oh, so bad. In further case of slow action, reel your shag quack and untie your line. Toss out a multi-purpose shag quack. Remove shotgun from case, load, and prepare yourself for a great day of shooting. Oh, because it's, it's a decoy deal. <laughs> Other uses for your shag quack. It's the perfect depth finder. Just add five ounces of lead weight. A training dummy for your schnauzer. Be sure to remove the hooks. Oh. During hunting season as a fishing decoy. And a great conversation piece in your trophy mount's mouth. <laughs> oh, boy, boy, boy. I don't know. I mean, maybe you could throw that thing under the bridge in Ladybird Lake where all the bats fly out every night. And maybe a lunker largemouth would think that's a little baby bat and hit it. <laughs> I don't know. Um... Or maybe you just gotta be a quack to fish a bait like this. Well, thanks, Bass and Buds, for tuning in to the top 10 as seen on TV lures that you've never seen on TV. Definitely drop a comment down below. Let me know if I left off any gimmick lures off this list. Maybe we gotta do a part three. And until next time, Bass and Buds, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.